I hope you had a peaceful Sunday. I hope you're having a great week and you're staying locked down at home, safe at home, being active, looking after your nutrition, your exercise, your sleep, your emotional health. <clears throat> I want to talk about a hormone today called oxytocin. Oxytocin is something that men, women, young children produce. Oxytocin is a hormone or a neurotransmitter. What is a neurotransmitter? Every time we have a thought, so for example right now, uh, I tell you to lift your finger. Okay, I say lift your uh, thumb. Okay, so you hear my command, it becomes a thought, lift my thumb. For that action to happen, that thought will produce neurotransmitters that will travel rapid, rapidly in nanoseconds and perform the action. So there'll be a neurotransmitter, there'll be a neuropeptide that translates the thought into action. So a neurotransmitter is something that makes things happen in our bodies from our thoughts and from our mindset. Okay, uh, so it's a neurotransmitter, it's a hormone. Now we want to understand the importance of this hormone because today everyone's talking about boosting immunity and like I always say and I will say it now and over and over again, health is not complicated. We've made it complicated. We forget every time that we are born with an intelligence in our systems that is designed to keep us at a healthy weight. It is designed to put us to sleep at night. It is designed to tell us how much to eat, when to stop eating. It is designed to produce more energy when it comes to exercising. But we've compromised it with obstacles. We've compromised our own intelligence and that's why it doesn't support us anymore. But when I can utilize or harness the intelligence of my own body and my brain, it looks after our health automatically. All we need to do is give it a little bit, a little bit of good food, a little bit of movement, a little bit of good quality sleep. And of course, we can't burden it with emotional stress and fear and anxiety, things which are not natural to the human body. So oxytocin is a hormone. It is found that we have oxytocin receptors all over our body, which means Okay, whenever there is a receptor, it means that we produce the hormone because the hormone can only work when it latches on to a receptor. Now, oxytocin is also called the love hormone, it's called the cuddle hormone, it's called the feel good hormone. It is the number one hormone in our body which is now today being studied as an immunomodulator, which means if we produce oxytocin, we can boost our immune system. That is one of the reasons why breastfeeding a child is so important. Let's understand, a woman also, a pregnant woman produces oxytocin for womb contractions, contractions of the uterus at the time of childbirth. If there is no oxytocin, there will not be any contractions. That's number one. So oxytocin controls a lot. When a baby breastfeeds, when a baby latches his or her lips onto the nipple, oxytocin is produced immediately signaling to release the flow of milk. At the same time, it also creates a bonding experience between the mother and the child. So child bonding starts immediately from the time of breastfeeding and immediately when a newborn baby is taken and putting it, put into the arms of a mother. Oxytocin is generated in both the child and the mother to produce a bonding, the mother-child bonding. There have been enough of beautifully beautifully controlled and recorded studies of how some children, infants when they're born, they cannot be put into the mother's arms. They're put straight into an incubator or into the you know, intensive care unit because of some complication they're born with. And they say, they show how the further, uh, the, the longer the gap between a mother and a child connecting, the slower is the growth rate of that child. So coming to children first, the growth of your child is dependent on oxytocin which is why breastfeeding is so important. Now, in conditions where a mother cannot breastfeed, the child can still develop oxytocin by being cuddled and being held. There are enough of studies showing that children who lose their parents in accidents or lose their mother at childbirth, you know, the mother dies or whatever it is, or children who live in broken families where they are never cuddled, they are never held close to each other, that touch, can develop oxytocin and oxytocin is responsible for growth and development of your child. Physically, musculoskeletal, brain, immunity and everything else. What I'm talking about today is the power of touch. There are many things that can develop oxytocin. Like I said, it's a cuddle hormone. The simple act of cuddling can produce oxytocin in both parties. Now cuddling, you don't have to be married to cuddle. You can cuddle with your infant, with your child, with your partner, with your siblings, whatever it is, there's, res there's res uh, respectful touch and there's disrespectful touch. My point is, there are beautiful studies showing that even when couples hold hands, 
okay even when the doctor holds the hand of a patient okay there is immediate flood of oxytocin which can boost the immune system which can develop trust between a patient and a, a doctor between a husband and a wife between a brother and a sister between a child and a parent we must not ignore the small things in life which are free but they're not being studied because you can't sell a hug you can't sell you know all of these things together so these things are not studied they're not researched but there's so much of science and that's why immediately a doctor or a nurse will take a baby and put it into the arms of the mother to immediately create oxytocin it is good for all of us so when we're trying to get out of depression we're trying to get out of stress and fear and anxiety that's why sometimes how do you comfort someone who's grieving someone just experienced loss in a family someone close died rather than saying words just a hug holding that person close head against the chest holding their hands a reassuring hug a reassuring hold is so healing for the person going through grief words will never heal as much as physical touch physical embrace of course today we live in a world where all of this touch people are scared to even do it for the right reasons because people misuse touch people misuse hugs to make it sexual lustful and all of that stuff but i'm not talking about that i'm talking about your ability in your own space of family your loved ones your relationships to indulge in more cuddles and more hugs and more touch because this is only good for your immune system that is why when we feel low when we feel sick what do we crave we we crave the touch of our mother or our parents or a loved one someone coming close to us holding us that starts the healing process on its own i'm not saying it's going to replace medication but human touch is everything so the moment telemedicine shows us that today medicine is only going to be online and you know there's never going to be a physical connection between a doctor and patient right now i can put a bet that those systems will fail it's great at a time of a virus but finally a sick patient always needs some amount of physical eye contact some amount of physical you know conversation with a person face to face to begin the healing process so what generates oxytocin for us okay pets that's why people love pets because pets make you feel good anything that makes you feel really really good at a cellular level produces oxytocin you can read a really good book and it's made you feel so good inside of you oxytocin again petting dogs cats all of that stuff human beings holding someone's hand without saying anything cuddles hugs good touch all of that stuff oxytocin being in nature being in nature can make you feel so good it can produce oxytocin listening to music really good music that makes you feel so good gives you that sense of fulfillment motivation all of that stuff that can produce oxytocin as well a lot of people try to take oxytocin sprays and all of that stuff but why would you do it when you have the capabilities of producing your own oxytocin when it comes to a patient going through depression take your drugs if you have to take your drugs i'm not here to stop you because i don't know how bad your condition is but also remember to utilize the chemicals that your body produces on its own to make you feel better which is why a patient going through depression isolating themselves completely is the worst thing they can ever do i know it's difficult no one wants to be out there when they're depressed but slowly making social contact and you know with very few people one at a time will actually help with the healing of someone who's going through depression children there are so many broken families out there today of of families where parents constantly fight we have those children who come to us the parent the children are just not growing physically emotionally their parents are fighting when their parents fight their security as children is threatened okay children look for security they look for security from their role models who are their parents so they feel any disaccord between their parents they believe that they are unsafe because they see their parents in disaccord that insecurity travels to a kid increasing anxiety changing their hormonal balance affecting their growth and all of these problems sometimes the only fix for a child's health are the parents behaving the right way in front of their children because again oxytocin gets suppressed the child cannot develop so we need to understand that healing just doesn't revolve around a diet plan exercise more pills more drugs and stuff sometimes it is the environment that we create for ourselves 
and for our children around us, it is the environment at your workplace, the environment in your marriage, the environment in your social group. If you're a part of a social group that makes you feel suppressed, makes you feel ridiculous little, okay? It is going to harm your health in a huge way. What is the fix? Get out of the social circle, make a new one, find one. You don't have to change to fit in. The moment you try to change to fit in, you're, you are already a victim of suppression. You are suppressing the real you to feel better. You're suppressing oxytocin chemicals and everything else, everything else. So please understand, you can Google all the superfoods in the world, but you already have chemicals that your body produces that can boost your immune system. Oxytocin increase is also being related today and studied with an increase in your WBCs, which is your white blood cells, which is your immune system. That is why when our patients are going through cancer and all of that stuff, the first question I ask all of them, what is your family support? Because more than your drugs, more than your chemo, more than, more than the nutrition I'm gonna give you, I need to know how much of love you have around you, how much of care and support and people around you because that is gonna be your most powerful healing drug. Then comes the chemo and your nutrition and everything else because you can have all of that stuff but if you don't have the basic chemicals produced in your body to boost your immune system and make you feel better, you know, you are gonna become a victim of your disease. And that's why we encourage, you know, uh, cuddles with your children, investing your time with them, your bedtime stories, all of these things. iPads are not gonna fix that. Gadgets are not gonna fix that. Exotic holidays and spoiling them with material things may be good for them if you can afford it, but it's not gonna fix what the body needs. You need to give your children and yourself things that money cannot buy, things that material things cannot fix in the human body. There is no material thing that can fix oxytocin in your child's body or fix their insecurity in them or in you. So sometimes we need to come back and invest and respect the sacred body that we have, the sacred mind that we have. We are products of nature. We have to invest in that. We gotta respect it. We gotta look after it. No amount of money can do the job of the intelligence of the human body. So something as simple as oxytocin, I've given you what you need to do to increase it, start doing it. You're in lockdown right now with either family, spouses, children, find, with your pets, find ways to develop oxytocin, you feel good. At the end of the day, if you go to sleep at night, feeling good about yourself, feeling good about something that happened in your day, you produced oxytocin, which is helping your body. But day after day, you go to sleep whining and complaining and thinking you have all the problems in the world. Everyone has a difficult. Every single person has a problem on this planet. I am yet to see a billionaire, a multi-millionaire, an athlete, an actress, an actor, or anyone who has it going right and perfect for them. So know that everyone has their own share of suffering. So don't make yourself a victim and think that you are the only person in the world who is going through shit all the time. The first step is get out of your victim mode. If you're a victim, you can never have action. You can never implement an action plan. But if you get out of victim mode, you open up whole new possibilities of change because you're not in a victim mode, which means you will take action to make your life better. And these are the little things that really, really, really matter. It is your mindset that is making you feel miserable. Nothing else. Yes, people may have contributed towards that negative mindset. You probably not got support from your wife or your husband or your father or your mother, all of that stuff. That may be the truth, but finally it is your mindset that will determine how you act, how you behave, how you feel post that. Only you can fix that. You can't go around fixing everyone in the world to behave a way that you want them to behave. The only thing that you can fix is your mindset. So by developing more oxytocin, we feel so good that sometimes it's easier to accept the shit that we have in our life. If I'm feeling really, really good and I have 10 problems, but I feel so good, I'll, those 10 problems may not be so significant anymore. But if I'm constantly focused on 10 problems in my life and I keep giving it and feeling its significance, it's gonna become my biggest, my biggest thought in the day, which means it's gonna be my biggest feeling and my biggest experience. It is so important for you to understand that the human brain produces chemicals to help us overcome grief, overcome sadness, overcome everything, bring us to a natural state which is being okay and being happy. That's a natural state. No, children, no child is born in this world feeling sad. They learn to feel sad. No child is born into this world learning to be angry. They learn to be angry. Okay, you were never born an angry person, a jealous person, a lustful person. You learned it along the way. Your mindset got conditioned and you learned it. Human beings are born neutral. 
with a condition of being happy and to feel good. Then they're put into life circumstances and that changes them. So never forget that. The innate self of a human being, the physiological self of a human being is to be happy, okay, and to search for happiness. We build our own obstacles to everything and we can choose blame and complain which solves no problem in our life or we can choose to start harnessing the intelligence of our body and making ourselves better day by day. Have a great day, everyone. Until next time, eat smart, move more, sleep right, and breathe deep.